AI Suite plays a big part in all of the ASUS motherboards uh, as far as control. It's a fantastic program for doing control outside of the BIOS, making adjustments and whatnot. But it plays actually a little bit different of a role on the Z97 Sabertooth with the Thermal Radar 2 playing a huge part of it. And you're not really getting the control over voltages um, and clock frequencies like you do on, say, an ROG board. So let's take a quick look at AI Suite 3 for... Um, Z97 Sabertooth. As you see, it's multi-component once again, but the components are a little different than uh, what you're going to see on an ROG board. You've got AI Charger, which allows uh, for a uh, three times speed charging on um, iPods, Apple devices that do um, support the BC 1.1 function. So three times is quick charging using AI Charger. USB 3.0 boost is a holdover. Um, turbo modes, UASP mode, and normal mode. So uh, any USB 3 device that is capable of turbo or UASP will uh, actually transfer a little bit quicker. So you'll get better speeds from your USB 3 devices using either the turbo or UASP mode uh, if they are so compatible. Easy update. Uh, very easily updates either your BIOS or your MyLogo. Um, now, obviously, the BIOS being the more important. If you want to check for updates, you just hit the check now and connect, and it'll go through checking for updates. Already checked this today. Um, no need for updates here. If there was a BIOS update available, it would be listed right here, and you could download and install. And moving back, system information. Very, very simple. Uh, motherboard information, as you see here. CPU information. And finally, all of your information on your memory, uh, including all of the JDEX that are uh, capable on or are actually on your installed RAM, as you see here. Not just a couple listed out, but actually everything that's there present on the RAM. So getting a total of seven JDEX here, typically you only see uh, one or two laid out, but you do actually get a chance to see absolutely everything. Moving on from there, USB BIOS flashback. Um, Take a look. The uh, Asus actually has a dedicated port able to flash back uh, your BIOS in case you're having a problem with BIOS. Uh, no need to boot into BIOS in order to do it. You can do it right from here. You can check for the BIOS update. Um, and actually, you're going to want to just put the BIOS on a USB drive, plug it into the dedicated port, start up the computer, and it will automatically update the BIOS. So if you ever break the drive or whatnot, as long as you have the copy of the BIOS, you can always get it started back up. It's actually saved me a couple of times during uh, power failures or whatnot during BIOS updates. So never really have to worry about breaking the BIOS. You can always recover it. Now, moving on, finally, USB 3 charger. Again, you've got a mark port in the back, USB 3 port for um, fast charging, for smartphones, tablets, etc., and you can turn that on and actually uh, turn on the USB charger plus for faster charging of these devices through USB 3. Finally, over on the right, you got version, which gives you the version number of the different components that you have installed. And now we're going to move over to thermal radar, which is, you see the large button over on the left, because it is the biggest part of uh, AI Suite 3 for the Z97 Sabertooth. Moving into Thermal Radar, the first uh, Thermal Radar 2, I should say. First screen you're greeted with is Thermal Tuning. And if you look down the bottom of the screen, all of your temperatures are laid out for you. Right down the bottom. Uh, and now there are quite a few temperatures laid out here. If you're curious as to what anything is and, you know, to learn exactly what they are, you've got the actual board laid out up, front, uh, up top and hovering over anything will tell you exactly what that corresponds to. Uh, that's the V-Core back, for example, which you see listed right here. Hovering over it shows you V-Core back 35 degrees, V-Core 37. So you can actually will get to know what these actually are, where they correspond to, and what fans you're going to need to actually cool them down. So if you've got a side fan, you know, you'd want it to be cooling this area. Uh, obviously, your intake fans, you want cooling up front. Um, CPU fan, obviously, the CPU. And your assist fans actually take care of the V-Core. So... Now, looking over on the right, you've got all of your fan status. And as you see, you go down, all of your uh, RPM and the fan status is listed. Now, up top, you've got thermal tuning. If you hit start, get into it, what it'll actually do, it will take all your fans, ramp them up to their maximum RPM, then bring them down until they stop. 
what this allows it to do is actually see exactly what your fans are capable of. So it'll know where the fans start, how fast they run, and can actually then program uh, within Thermal Radar 2 all the silent standard, you know, turbo uh, to know exactly the capabilities of your fan. So rather than just using a random generic, you know, read or um, speed, it's going to know your fan and work with those particular fans. So you get a much more customized experience. You know, you hit the start button, it takes about two and a half to three minutes to go through. Like I say, ramps the fans up, brings them down, and then when you're done, you'll have everything already programmed. Um, also, if you're wondering about where a fan is when you're on this screen, you can actually come over here, there's the little fan icon, and so the selected fan will operate at full speed and everything else will stop. So if you hit start, that's exactly what's going to happen. It'll allow you to identify each fan. And at that time, you can name the fan and assign the CPU fan position, uh, as you see here. So we're going to cancel out of that since that's already been done. We're going to move over to fan control. And as you see, all of your fans are listed up top. Now this is another place you can actually name and um, get your fans set up. As you open, if you click on the right side of the screen here, uh, on the case itself, you'll see gives you the option to put the fan name in, as well as the fan position. Just choose your fan position below, and you can then save it. Uh, as you can see, I've already done that. I'm using a pump right now on the CPU header, so I've got the pump in the CPU fan position. And as you move through, you see intake one in the front, I've got rad, uh, rad fans in push, I've got second intake fan in the front, etc. <clears throat> now, as you click on the left, you'll actually bring up the fan control itself. And this is where you can actually manipulate all of your fan curve and get it to exactly where you like. And it'll actually tell you out what the fan acceleration time is and the fan deceleration time is, and you can actually change that. Um, it optimizes it for a smoother experience, a little bit less noise. Now, the other thing you'll notice here, uh, when you bring this up, over on the right, what you're going to get, everything is assigned to a point where it's going to respond to. So it's going to respond to a temperature. Um, so right now, the pump fan actually is somehow assigned to the PCH, uh, the USB 3, and the PCI Express. Now, you know this, you can see the box is outlined in blue green and purple and as you look you've got a blue green and purple uh, pointer right here telling you what it's doing now we're going to change this obviously because we wanted the CPU fan adjusting to CPU temperature all of your percentages do have to add up to 100% so we're actually going to take these bring them down to 0% and have it operate 100% to the CPU we'll then apply that and we'll move over to the next fan. The intake uh, is right now working off of PCH USB 3 PCI 1. Obviously, we're going to want the intake fans, you know, working with the motherboard temp and responding to things up front, the DRAM, as well as the PCH. And we're going to want it responding less to the DRAM, obviously, than we are to the motherboard and the PCH. So we're going to bring that down to about 10% and bring the motherboard way up because that's really uh, the area we want to be cooling with the uh, intake fans. So we'll apply that. And, you know, you go through and you've got just really a ton, like I say, of um, options here as far as really just tweaking exactly what you want each fan doing. So as you go through, you'll assign your fans, like I say, and they will respond to exactly what you program them to, as you see here. So obviously, you know, if you have a side fan, you're going to want it cooling this area. Your intake fans, you want it responding to what's going on over here. Um, your V-Core and uh, V-Core back are going to be handled by the assist fans, which you'll be able to program. So you've really got a great amount of flexibility going there uh, as far as the programming. Now, fan overtime, uh, this will actually run the uh, assist fans for, uh, comes pre-programmed for one minute after you shut down the system, blow out any hot air under the uh, thermal armor. That can be turned off or set all the way up to 10 minutes. 
but default is one minute and that seems to do the job very well. Now also you have dusty fan, the rear um, assist fan under the thermal armor will actually spin in reverse, blow out any dust, it'll run for 15 seconds of boot up, full speed in reverse, and then once an hour, which can be set to you know as little as once every four hours or disabled entirely, it'll reverse spin for the uh, amount of time you set, anywhere from disabled to up to 45 seconds. It'll turn on full speed and blow out any dust uh, while you're actually using the system. Moving over to thermal status, you'll get an assessment of what's actually going on in your VGA and CPU. I will say it's going to give you a much more accurate reading if you're giving, using air cooling than if you're using liquid cooling. Um, obviously, as soon as uh, the CPU comes under load, you're going to get the CPU um, zone is going to go through the roof as far as excellent if you're using uh, an actual like custom loop. Uh, or a really good air cooler. Um, so VGA zone obviously is going to depend on your cooling solution there as well and you get a full thermal assessment how many uh, degrees per watt uh, that you're currently dissipating. Moving over to the recorder you can actually see all of your voltages, temperatures, and all of your fan speeds and you can bring up any one of them and actually take a look at what's going on and what's been going on. You can actually go through, forward and backwards, as you see, and use the chart to see what's going on with any of your voltages. Let's take up something that uh, actually changes a little. You can see the pump actually is changing speeds, you know, a tiny bit as you idle along, and you can actually see what's going on with any, like I say, of your measurable parameters here. Now, moving over, uh, Thermal Radar 2, of all places, is where DigiPlus Power Control is located in AI Suite 3. Now, like I said, you don't have that ability to change uh, clock speeds, etc. But in Thermal Radar 2, all the controls for the DigiPlus Power Control that you find in the BIOS are located right there. So you can go in actually to tweak, you know, get your temps down a little bit, get your um, voltages, you know, working correctly. So you've got your CPU power phase control, VRM switching thermal control, current capability, load line calibration, and power duty control. And over on the DRAM, you've got your voltage frequency, current capability, and DRAM phase control. Now, any of these can also be saved to a profile, or you can load a profile. Um, if you want to save this particular profile, just go in, type the name in, and click Save, and it'll be saved. Right now, I'm using uh, my own profile, which is silent, separate um, push and pull and you can load any of the profiles like I say that you've saved or any of the ASUS default programs that you see here. So you do get actually to change, some, you know, save some profiles and load them up as you see fit. So you've got some great tweaking and a very, very powerful solution as far as cooling. You can really tweak it out with Thermal Radar 2. The uh, Z97, I mean, that's one of the big draws is the uh, handling of the thermals and this really makes it very, very easy to work with.